Some reactions involve the transfer of electrons from one species to another. These are called oxidation reduction or redox reactions because oxidation is the loss of electrons while reduction is the gain of electrons. This can be remembered by the phrase oil rig which stands for oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. In order to determine if something has lost or gained electrons, we need to be able to identify the oxidation states of atoms on each side of a redox reaction. This can be done using the following guidelines. First, the oxidation state of an atom as a free element is zero. For example, the oxidation state of the iron as an iron metal or Fe solid would be zero. At the same time, the oxidation state of the oxygen atoms in elemental oxygen, O2 gas, would also be zero. The second guideline says that the oxidation state of a monoatomic ion is just the charge. So for example, the oxidation state of the chloride ion would be minus one, whereas the oxidation state of the iron three plus ion would be plus three. The third guideline states that the sum of the oxidation states of all atoms in a compound or ion must be equal to the charge on the compound or the ion. So for example, since the water molecule is neutral, the sum of the oxidation states of the two hydrogens plus the one oxygen must also equal zero. On the other hand, since the carbonate ion has a charge of two minus, then the sum of the oxidation states of the one carbon plus the three oxide ions must equal negative two. The next guideline indicates that metals in compounds will have a positive oxidation state similar to their ion charge in their compound. So for example, sodium in sodium chloride would have an oxidation state of plus one. The alkali metals or group one metals would have oxidation states of plus one when they're in compounds. On the other hand, the magnesium ion in magnesium chloride would have an oxidation state of plus two because the alkaline earth metals or group two metals have an oxidation state of plus two when in a compound. The last guideline indicates that nonmetals in compounds will generally have negative oxidation states unless they're combined with more electronegative nonmetals. So for example, in the compound calcium fluoride, each fluoride ion would have an oxidation state of minus one, which would be expected since that's a charge on the fluoride ions as halogens or group 17 elements. On the other hand, nitrogen in the molecule ammonia would have an oxidation state of minus three. As a rule of thumb, you can use as a guideline that fluoride will have an oxidation state of minus one, oxygen will have a state of minus two, and the hydrogen atoms in compounds would have an oxidation state of plus one, even though it is a nonmetal. This is because the hydrogen is usually paired with another more electronegative nonmetal. Let's look at a few examples of identifying the oxidation states of atoms in the compounds below. In the first example, we have the ion sulfate, SO4, with a two minus charge. We know that the sum of the charges must equal negative two so that means the oxidation states of the one sulfur plus the four oxides must equal negative two. If we assume from our guidelines that oxygen is minus two, that means the oxidation state of the one sulfur plus four negative two oxidation states from the oxygen must equal negative two. And rearranging the equation, we see that the sulfur must have an oxidation state of plus six. In the second example, we have the neutral molecule CCl4, carbon tetrachloride. So we know that the sum of the oxidation states of the one carbon and the four chlorines must equal zero. Since the chloride is a halogen, we could assume that the chloride is going to have an oxidation state of minus one since it's more electronegative than the carbon. Therefore, the oxidation state of the one carbon plus the four negative one oxidation states for the chlorides must equal zero. And rearranging this equation, we see that the oxidation state of the carbon must be four. Finally, we have the neutral ionic compound sodium nitrate. In this case, the sum of the oxidation states of the one sodium, the one nitrogen, 
and the three oxides must equal zero. Since sodium is an alkali metal in a compound, we would assume its oxidation state is plus one, and we would assume that the oxide ions have an oxidation state of minus two. When we plug these values into the equation, we see that the nitrogen atom in sodium nitrate must have an oxidation state of plus five. After watching this video, you should be able to identify the guidelines for determining the oxidation states of atoms in compounds. You should also be able to use these guidelines to actually determine the oxidation states of atoms in compounds or ions.